David, just before uh, we look forward to Sunday, just um, look back on last night. First of all, how's uh, Cuco Martina? Is he is he okay? Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. He had um, his X-rays and his scans, and they all came back clear. He was a little bit dizzy, uh, concussed. Um, and very tired on the plane on the way home. Um, so he's fine. You know, we 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 managed to get him back to us, and, and he travelled uh, home with us. So um, he's all fine. He'll uh, probably be out for a couple of weeks now, uh, as a precaution. Um, but he's he was un in he was in great hands last night, and you know all the doctors doctors and medics looked after him really well, and uh, we thank them for that. Uh, and thankfully he's fine. Unfortunately. Uh a third defeat um, for you, David, out out of the Europa League. Now um, the mood can't have been great on the on the plane home last night. How hard is your job now to to actually lift them for this massive game that you've got on Sunday? Well, yeah, everybody was disappointed, and and, and rightly so. You should be disappointed. Everybody, you know, you know we want, wanted to go there, um, win the game um, for our fans, and you know, to have three four thousand Everton fans to travel over there, it hurts. It hurts me uh, because I'm one of them. So um, I'm, I'm devastated for them, but it's my job to pick the team up. It's my job to pick a team. It's my job to get everybody going again. Um, I don't like dismissing games, but because of the short space of time that we have to to the next game, we have to put that behind us and um, and come together again to to win on Sunday. So it was a case of needs must last night for you in terms of the way you selected the side. No, I picked a team to to win a game. We gave opportunities to other people. To other players who've been chomping at the bit, who, who have, have something to prove, uh, and to try and get them into the team on Sunday. So there was there were some decent performances. Uh, like I said after the game last night, for 70 minutes, you know we did a great job. But um, you can't play football for 70 minutes. It's a 90, 95 minute game, and uh, unfortunately we conceded a couple of poor goals. But yeah, we we have to put it behind us now and, and concentrate on Sunday. What is your latest position off the pitch? Any further update, David? No, no, it's it's as it was. Uh, I spoke to the chairman last night, um, but no, it's as it was. And you'll be talking to him again very soon. Hopefully, we'll. Um, well, I talk to him every day. I speak to the chairman every day, um, which is great. He's been a great support. Uh, so of you know all the board members who have who were with us all the way through this this couple of weeks. So um, everybody's been fantastic. Communication has been great. And um, hopefully we'll all sit down and, and sort what's best for the club in the in the international window. So there's been no indication immediately when that will be. There'll be a chat next week. Uh, no indication, but but you know the sooner it's resolved, the better for everybody. So Sunday, uh, it is a, a big game. They're all big games at the moment, David. Is this your final audition, maybe for the for the manager's job on a permanent basis? Like I said last night after the game, and I've said in a couple of press conferences, it's not about me. You know, um, I stand there proud to be Everton manager, um, but it's about what's best for the club. Uh, Sunday is a massive game for the club. Uh, it's, it's a great game. It's a great opportunity um, to, to get back to winning ways. And Sunday's about Everton Football Club. And you know, we need a win, and we need a win for the fans. We need a win for the players desperately uh, to give them some confidence. And we all need to come together and and be together and, and win a game of football. Some may say you've been unfortunate. Those three, game, three games in charge have been away from home at, at difficult venues as well. You've now got an opportunity at, at Goodison Park. How, how much does that mean to you to be uh, standing on the touchline as manager at Goodison? It means everything. Um, it'd be great to get back to Goodison Park. Three tough away games. Um, but, you know, you play the cards that you dealt and and certainly, you know, you won't find me complaining or moaning about um, difficult fixtures. Um, it'd be great to get back to Goodison, and I can't wait to stand there in front of 40,000 Evertonians, who I know will get behind everybody on on Sunday afternoon. How do you make it a difficult place again for the opposition to get a result? Well, we stick together, and that includes the fans as well. We, we stick together. The players have got to play on the front foot. Um, you know, they're well aware of what's needed at Goodison, and. If they're not, I'll certainly be reminding them of of, of what is needed at Goodison. Um, but you know, in moments in the game, we all need to stick together, and we we need to try and play with with freedom and, and positivity. And that's my job to instill that in the players. Can we expect to see some of those senior players that didn't make the trip to France back on Sunday? Well, all those senior players will be available for the game. Is Michael Keane anywhere near? Fit? Um, he trained yesterday. Uh, he's going to train this afternoon with us, and we'll see how he comes through this afternoon's session, uh, but fingers crossed, he should be okay. And what have you made of Watford this season? 
I think they've been terrific. I think they've performed really well. They're a strong, powerful team. Um, and, you know, it'll be a tough game on Sunday. But I'd like us to concentrate on, on what we do. Um, we will respect them as we would normally do. Uh, and they've had, a, they've had a great start to the season. But when you've got 40,000 Evertonians behind you, you know, you, you know you, you're you playing, hopefully, uh, with that confidence that they will bring to us. Is it a reflection on how well they've done that their manager has even been linked with this position here at Everton? Well, I wouldn't know whether he's been linked or not because I haven't had time to see that. Um, but he's, they certainly started well. And um, if that's the case, that's the case. Just one final one away from the, the game, David. Um, you, you gave a nine-year-old boy recently the most wonderful day out at Finch, for Finch Farm imaginable after he wrote a letter to the chairman, I believe, stating that he wanted to be a football manager. And despite everything that had gone on, I think he was due here uh, a couple of days after Koeman was sacked and wanted to cancel it. But you said, no, come on in. We'll do the day for you. Um, this is a reflection really on what it means to be an Evertonian, what the football club um, can actually do in, in these sort of circumstances. Yeah, a wonderful story, young Matthew. Um, he wrote a letter to the chairman and then got passed on, on to myself. Um, and we wanted to, he wanted to be a manager. Um, so we invited him in. He uh, came in, had his breakfast with the players. Um, he watched training. And then I spent about half an hour with him, might have been even longer actually because he had about 50 questions for me um, and he was a, he was a delight, um, lovely family, all his family came as well and you know I think we do that very well here, I think I have to say you know when when people write in or people you know connect with us um, I think we do that really well and um, you know it was a great day and it was lovely to meet him and his family and uh, you know, I certainly enjoyed it as well. Was he asking the right questions? Does he have he what it very takes? Good. He was very good. I'm um, not sure about his finances because he was paying his, uh, his players a little bit too much. And uh, I think his mum was the secretary and uh, he wasn't paying her at all. So, um, yeah, I think he needs a little bit of help with his finances. But, oh, no, he's great. He, um, you know, you, when you make a promise to a nine-year-old boy, you've got to keep it. Thanks, David. Brilliant. Thank you. David, uh, Rooney, Baines, Jagielka didn't go to France and I think a lot of us assume that they'll be involved at some stage of the weekend. How important are the senior players now at this stage in the season when you, you look at the league table? Yeah, I think, I think senior players are always important um, and all those names that you've, you've just said there are, are all top players um, with, with many, many appearances under their names. And you know we've got a few young players in in the in and around the squad as well, so their importance to those young players as well is is vital. And I think any time you go into big games, um, and Sunday's a big game, big game, cup final for me, I think you need you always need your senior players who you can rely on and trust. The youngsters are all used to success with the under 23s. They're in a different football environment now. How how are they coping with that? Yeah, they've got a great winning mentality. They're used to winning over the period of time. Uh, last two or three years, we've, you know, we've won most games. Um, so they take that with them into the first team environment, um, and they've performed really well. I think our younger players have have done great recently. Um, so they've just got to keep doing what they're doing, and um, you know, everybody else has got to help them around. But it's a team game, and we're all together, and we must stick together. And I think that's the important message going into Sunday that young players, senior players, experienced players. We're all as one and we go into it with our fans, with our uh, brilliant supporters to try and win a game of football. I know you've talked about being mentally strong. You have a couple of sessions, I guess, before the game. How do you create that mental strength over the next couple of days? Well, we, we discuss, we talk, um, you know, we, we, we look at the sessions that we're going to do in great detail and we try and give the players as much information to help them. And it's our job to, you know, to lift the spirits, to uh, put a smile on the faces, and trying to give them a little bit of confidence and as much detail as they can to help them win a game of football. And what about the fans? How big a role have they got to play on Sunday? Massive, massive. Um, Goodison is is an amazing place to play football. I've experienced it. I know it. I know it like the back of my hand. And it's when our fans get behind us, uh, there's no better place to play your football. I can assure you. And uh, I know on Sunday that they'll be there for us. Uh, not me, but they'll be there for the team because the team needs its fans at the moment and uh, we all need to stick together in a difficult time. But I know that'll happen on Sunday.
David, when you talk about those fans, is, has it surprised you in, in the position that you've been in these last couple of weeks, the form that, that the team finds itself in? Well, we're not winning games. And when you don't win games, you, your confidence um, isn't as high as it should be. And the expectation level of, of playing for this football club is that we go into every game to try and win. Uh, I think that's, you know, that's the mentality that any Everton player needs. And um, we haven't done that, unfortunately, recently. And uh, we haven't won, won enough games. We've had a difficult period. Um, that's not making excuses. We've had a difficult run of games, um, be it the start of the season as well. So we need to just gather stock, come together, um, win a couple of games quickly, because my experience playing in the Premier League tells me that you know you can go and win a couple of games and, and all of a sudden be in the top ten. So you know we need to do that, but we need to do that quickly. But with that experience that you've had, do you, can you can you put your finger on what's what's missing, what's lacking, or what it is? Well, that's very difficult, you know. Um, for for most of the games that I've been in charge, we've we've competed. The efforts there. Um, occasionally, we've made silly mistakes that have conceded goals. Uh, so we need to tighten that up. Uh, we need to try and create a few more opportunities to give everybody the opportunity to try and try and hit the back of the net. So it's it's a little bit of everything, and you try and help, and you try and tweak that as best you can, and you try and pick the right team and the right individuals for the for the the next game because all that matters is winning the next game and certainly when you play for this club you know you've got to have the mentality of winning every game and, and I know you say it's not about you and you, you're going to obviously have talks over the international break as well to, to see what, what the future holds here in terms of going forward um, what kind of reassurances have the chairman given to you and, and do you expect to be facing us all here after the international break I don't know is the honest answer. Um, I don't know, um, but what I what I do know is that when the chairman and the owner and the board come together, they'll make a decision what they think is right for the football club, and you know I'll accept that whatever that may be. Uh, if it's me, great. If it's somebody else who can help the team do better um, and to climb up the table and start winning games, fantastic. Um, so whatever will be will be, um, and I, you know we will all accept that because we all want what's right for this club. And I guess it's a process, isn't it? So however long that takes, I guess you'll still be here facing us. Well, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, you know, whatever's best for the club um, is, is best for the club. And uh, what we want, um, myself sitting here as caretaker manager, as an Everton fan, is what's best for this club.